I see precious metals making a move here shortly, which means that it's going to be the exact opposite for the equity markets. So the megaphone top will hold. Markets will begin to collapse. We're going to look back at this months down the road and realize that the inflection point, the turn point for the U.S. and the world markets um, came in uh, at, in the month of September of 2016. All that's set now is for a gold move vertical and an equity market collapse. The zinc supply is facing a massive deficit. Mine closures are certainly putting a major upward pressure on the best performing metal of 2016. Right now, China has temporarily shut down 26 of its zinc mines until June of 2017. Zinc inventories are at their lowest level since 2009 and the zinc fundamentals could not be any more favorable as the world is facing a worldwide supply shock. The former president of the largest gold producer in the world just left the company to join a junior mining zinc play that is currently sitting on $9 billion of zinc and rising. Learn more about this incredible opportunity at crushthestreet.com slash zinc. Hello everyone and welcome into the show. I got Bo Polney of gold2024cast.com. I am Kenneth Amaduri. Bo has called the bottom right here on this show for gold uh december 3rd 2015 gold 1045 dollars uh to the t and it's completely documented on our our previous shows and on various places around the internet and uh we've certainly seen quite the excitement this year in the gold and silver sector coming up off it gold's low and specifically in the underlying miners. Unexpectedly, I would say that we are seeing new highs in overvalued equities. Uh, I know you've talked with us about this, uh, Bo, and we're going to expect to see some big moves in stocks and spectacular highs in gold and silver as we are going to get this full update with you today. But first of all, Bo Polney, thanks for joining me. And thank you for the ability to have another follow-up interview with you today, and uh, I'm great to be here. So I'm looking forward to our chat. Absolutely. Well, you know what? I want to talk to you, start off this conversation with the correction, the pullback we are seeing in the precious metals at the moment. Uh, a week ago, actually, we saw a reckless slam down of gold, someone selling $1.5 billion worth of gold into the markets and really this is the kind of stuff for me that you know I can hang my hat on and say there's blatant fraud uh, in the the market because no one who's trying to to make a profit is going to recklessly sell uh, a, an exorbitant amount of value of, of precious metals in the market in the way that it happened and uh, we're seeing a, a move down in silver as well and you've talked about this and I want to get your thoughts here you know on what we're seeing currently with gold and silver so Ken on the introduction we talked about um, how we called I called you up a couple weeks in advance and I scheduled a December 3rd interview for the exact bottom we called it on, on gold. And so that was at uh, $1,045 and we scheduled right. that interview two weeks earlier. Well, what did I do a week, week and a half ago? I sent you an email and said, hey, Ken, let's do an interview on, uh, on uh, August 29th, which was yesterday. Uh, and then I rescheduled the interview to uh, today, which is August 30th, okay? This is true, um, and we're and, recording it after the close, yeah. Yeah, and, and then uh, what I also did was a couple weeks ago when I requested the interview with you, um, if you recall, I, what did we say about what's going to happen to silver and gold? It's going to be what? It's going to get uh, smashed. It's going to get smashed, yeah, it's going to go down. Right. Yeah, that's right. So basically, so gold at the time was like, I think, 1360-ish uh, when we talked, and silver was, uh, I think, it was over 20 in the 20 range. And today, um, the uh, 30th of August, after close, uh, gold at 1310 with a low at 1308. And yesterday, silver put in a low at 1838. Uh, today, closing, I think, around uh, 18 and 1857-ish. So, um, so where we're at today, so this date in time today, August 30th, is supposed to be, Ken, the same equivalent time point that you and I did 
the interview on December third. Okay, so the same equivalent theory, time point. What what do you um, what what do you mean? So by that? pullback. Okay, so so today would be a final pullback. Off, so we had a low come in. We had a rise in gold all the way up to just under fourteen hundred. I think thirteen seventy and change. And now we had a pullback. Uh, into this kind of flush smash down uh, in August and in, into in the end of August. So after today, the probability for lower prices is extremely small, and most likely reversal is now imminent to the upside. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and so off this reversal, um, the bull market's about to reengage. So to say the least, it would be very surprising. If we are below fourteen hundred by the end of the year, would you agree with that in gold? Well, the initial move that we're seeing initially should be just to the underside of fifteen uh, into the fifteen hundred range on gold, uh, and then after once once fifteen's taken out, I still believe we're going to go to new all time highs before year end. So gold is still on an explosive path. Uh, it's just the the issue with cycles is everybody is so concerned about price. See, as a cycles analyst, I don't care that much about price. What I care about is nailing the tops and the bottoms because they're cycles. And so all I know is that from a cycle standpoint, we are, we're out of time now to the pressure to the downside. In other words, like the wind's blowing down, it's out of time. It's no longer going to keep blowing and it's going to reverse now. Mm. So the price is going to reverse. Now the question is how high is it going to go? So all you can do is draw support resistance lines. And the first real resistance that I see on gold comes in just around just a little bit over 1500 and and so since we've got up cycles coming at us here very very shortly, don't be surprised if fifteen hundred is the next target, mm -hmm. or just over fifteen hundred should be the next target. Bo, uh, and then when it comes to silver, mathematically, uh, just it going back to its two thousand eleven high, uh, there's what two and a half times of upward potential for for silver and, and gold. Just going back to its high, uh, I mean, not even looking at a hundred percent. So. Uh, mathematically, silver has you know much more explosive potential, at least from my perspective. But you know, remind our listeners, you know what what you were looking at as far as your uh, projections and and what we're likely to see in silver here. Okay, so let's talk about silver. So from prior interviews, I know we've talked about this, and I've kind of given you a little cycle uh, strategy. But silver bottoms after gold. So silver bottoms first, gold. Uh, sorry, gold bottoms. First, my correction, silver bottom second. Okay, so if you look at December of 2015, gold bottom beginning of uh, December, silver bottom two weeks later. But then silver starts to play the game of taking over the reins. Okay, mm -hmm. and so now we're basically getting into August here into September. And so, so you'll notice gold pushed down so sizably today, but silver held up pretty good and it didn't push down as much. So silver's starting to take over the reins here uh, and it's going to outperform gold moving forward. Okay, very, very shortly. It's starting to gain momentum, and it's very soon going to start outperforming gold. So don't be surprised over the next few months, you see silver far outperforming gold. And the reason is because of the ratio, as we've chatted before too, Ken, is when you have a ratio of 80 to 1, you know, in the in, the in ground ratio, for every one ounce you mine of gold, typically you would get um, 10 ounces of silver, right? And, you know, I think in December and January, the ratio got to like over 80. And I think now we're somewhere in the 70s. I haven't checked recently. But the point is, it, it needs to get back up into the 10 to 1 range, but that, again, would be a war ratio. So we're still far away from that, but at least I think we're getting to this, which we should be shortly at the 30 to 40 to 1 ratio, which means that silver should at least double the performance of gold in the near term. Yeah. Bo, uh, let's talk about the U.S. markets, and I, I, you know, I know this relates heavily to precious metals because, you know, as people fear financial assets, uh, financialized assets, uh, they go into real monetary assets such as gold and silver. And we've talked about this before. Um, you know, you you called the the top essentially, you know, for and it held up for the longest time back uh, in 2015, back in the summer there. And uh, it held up for the very for the longest time, but we are seeing the stock markets hit new highs here. And I was hoping you'd be able to address this here in the interview. Has it surprised you seeing uh, the U.S. equities go into all-time highs? 
Great question. Here's the thing. What put it through? When I do calculations, they're all based on biblical calculations. The problem is, biblically, there's a, we're living in the midst of a jubilee year. And what that is, it's like a whole year. It's 360 days. Okay, so um, in the Greg, we were last year, for example, in 2015, we were supposed to be sitting at where we're at today with gold. But instead, we're a year later, okay? And the reason we're a year later with gold is because of the jubilee year, the 360-day cycle forward. So I talked about that when I did the Greg Hunter interview. It's not that gold's going to, not going to 2000. It, it's taken a year longer because of this jubilee cycle. And so when you do the calculations, everything mathematically perfect until you realize, oh, you need to add 360 days to the calculation. So um, with gold, with the stock market, um, yeah, so yes, we did call the top, to, I think the day, within a day or two, the exact top in July of 2015 for the NASDAQ. Uh, but since the NASDAQ high has been taken out. But I don't know if you have a chance, Ken, but we did an, uh, a YouTube video called Chaos 2016, and it's on YouTube. And that video uh, is titled Chaos 2016 at our web page or our, our YouTube page of Gold 2024. Yeah, so I would recommend your listeners um, you know, have a quick listen. It's only a 15-minute video. In that video, we draw what is called a megaphone top pattern. I did okay? see it, yeah. Okay, and so in the megaphone top, you can look at any of the U.S. markets presently as of today, and you will notice that the megaphone top and all the charts that I've drawn has not broken, which means that the high, even though it's higher, it's because it's a year later, it's still sitting at the undercusp of the power, of the megaphone. So it's just, it hasn't broken, and it's simply just petering in at the very, very tail end of it. But we're out of time. So I see precious metals making a move here shortly, which means that it's going to be the exact opposite for the equity markets. So the megaphone top will hold. Markets will begin to collapse. We're going to look back at this months down the road and realize that the inflection point, the turn point for the U.S. and the world markets um, came in uh, at, in the month of September of 2016. Um None of, not one of the world markets have made a new high since we call the exact top on China in May, April, May of uh, 2015 either. So basically all world markets, all they're telling us is that uh, there's no new high. The U.S. markets have failed to confirm and break a megaphone pattern. So all that's set now is for a gold move vertical and an equity market collapse or a massive crash. But I think when this blows up, it's going to be fast, extremely painful for people who are on the wrong side of the trade. So um, it's very important to be alert, uh, you know, come September. And we'll be looking for that, Bo. Uh, Bo, we're talking about major moves in the stock market, major moves in precious metals. The Fed made an announcement, and they alluded to needing an additional 2 to $4 trillion in QE to combat, you know, what would be the next garden you know, mill recession that we, they are anticipating, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about, you know, a massive collapse, not just two to four trillion uh, dollars that would be needed. And of course, another four trillion would essentially double the, the balance sheet of the Fed, a massive move that they're alluding to for just a, a small recession. Um, Bo, I, I, I want to talk to you about, you know, what people should be preparing for uh, in regards to you know massive moves in the stock market and and major upward moves in precious metals. Well, the one thing to remember, okay, watch our videos again. Please, you know, take the fifteen minutes, watch the videos. Basically, these are incredibly powerful long term cycles. I took the calculation back to zero from the birth of Jesus. The point is. The biblical calculation of, of, of 8 times 252 years adds up to the year 2016 this year. So the issue is we're getting into September, which means you have September, October, November, and December. You have four months to go, and the calculations are clearly pointing to be uh, an ep epic event, epic changes that are still to occur and, and begin this year, calendar year. So stock market is paper. The dollar is paper. Currencies are paper. 
everything is paper, okay? And the reason, the clear, and the one only reason any of these asset classes clearly have value is because of belief or faith that they do, okay? Now, if something were to happen, okay, and faith is broken, understand the, the magnitude and the quickness of how this all could change overnight, very quickly, okay? The point is, if in, in gold, and especially gold and silver, they are money, okay? They've always been money. It's just that over the past hundreds of years, especially since 1970, you know, they've been, they've, you've been able to control the price of it through paper. But again, when, when the faith and confidence, when confidence is lost in paper, what will stand as the only thing that's money is gold and silver. So it's really, really important to be positioned, you know, in, you know, in physical gold and silver and holding it, um, you know, outside the banking system, but basically holding it somewhere and knowing that, that you've got a, so a piece or a portion or a large portion, but whatever your, your, you know, your comfort level is. But it's important to be, you know, it's important to have some exposure or sizable exposure to precious metals because remember, they are not paper. They're God's money. They've always been money, and they will soon prove to be pure money. Mm. Bo, uh, talking about the Fed here and the Fed's this lack of decision, they're kind of jawboning this last Friday, you know, alluding to a possible rate hike, but, you know, clearly leaving it wide open for September. You know, w when they raised rates last time, there was a massive shock to the markets. Uh, you know, China, Chinese markets at, at the beginning of the year. Uh, we saw the, the U.S. stock market, a lot of volatility. And interest rates, like the 10-year bond, for instance, fell dramatically. And I guess my question to you is, what does it tell us when the Fed is trying to raise rates, but the real rates uh, continue to fall uh, in in the bond bond yields. Well, I, I did look at the overall bond yields and and, and the dollar. And what I you know, it, it's get it's faith and confidence that there is value in in the bonds. Okay, but those are the last things. So what what happens when the dollar breaks? Then the denominated assets such as bonds will lose value. So if the dollar drops by twenty or thirty percent. The asset class, such as bonds, when you go to sell them, they will be valued at twenty or thirty percent lo lower because you're buying, uh, buying, you're spending the, do you're basically buying it and getting the dollar, and so these asset classes are going to become toxic, and that's what I see happening. It doesn't matter what the Fed does; it's at an exponential time. It's it, it just mathematically the numbers have become so exponential. It, eventually, they're not going to work anymore. Yeah. And uh, as far as the the severity of the situation we're looking at here, you know, what are you telling people to prepare for? You know, not not just financially, but you know, where where they live and 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 you know how they prepare. I mean, what are you expecting? And you know, what are your cycle? What is your cycle work telling us about uh, what is yet to come for you know people's standard of living, especially if you're in the big cities? You know, great question. Before we even talk about standards of living, I think this is the most important thing to understand: is that everything in the world, is, the, the way I do my work, is through their biblical calculations, which means that they prove the Bible. You know, so if if you don't believe in God, that's the first problem. So I think you need to do a little, you know, soul searching. Number two is get, you know, be positioned physically with with precious metals so you have means to transact. And and then with relation to you know to to being um, the location of where you're living, you know, my suggestion, my not suggestion, but they might want to consider to you know you know if you're living in populated cities where you see. Um, you know, where stock market has crashed and there's chaos and, and, you know, there's big problems, you know, you may not want to be residing in places of high population. That's you know, something to definitely consider. And lastly, um, you know, the most thing is you have to eat. So you know, it doesn't hurt to have, uh, you know, have some stores, some, some storage. You know, it says in the Bible, prepare, mm. prepare. 
Well, uh, those are those are great words right there, uh, Bo. Um, uh, what are your thoughts on the junior mining sector and, and how it relates to gold? You know, I, a handful of my subscribers, they love to trade the mining stocks. So I, I've been looking at them over the past few months. And uh, so I just I got some really, you know, we've been able to nail a lot of them, a lot of the junior miners, like the highs and the lows, because they really seem to correlate quite nicely with gold and silver. Um, so we've had a lot of success uh, with with that. Um, and, yeah, you know, the, there's there's a few mining uh, stocks that we look at, and, boy, they they, they, let, they move <laughs> So I got to admit, it's been pretty exciting to see some of these the, uh, the positions of some of my clients really move. It's been wild. They they really know when gold moves a little. They 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 move two two to three four times. Uh, you know what precious when gold or silver do sometimes. So you know pretty pretty impressive uh, movements on, on many of the, of the mining stocks, especially yeah. the junior miners. Oh yeah, I mean with the twenty five percent move in gold, we're seeing hundred, two hundred, three hundred, you know five hundred percent moves in some of these uh, some of these miners here. I, I want to give you an opportunity here if you have any closing thoughts that you know you didn't get to share or that you were hoping to share in this interview uh, to do so and also uh, let people know about gold 2020 forecast.com thanks Ken yeah really I, I think this is just a critical time in, in our in our world um, we've had you know the, the bottom has really been in on gold and silver uh, we've had you know multiple months now to to, pr to prepare you know we've got June July here now into August. We've had a great opportunity here, and uh, you know, to at some little bit lower prices on the precious metals. But all of this is about to change very, very, very soon. And I think it's important to you know to as, I mean, you know protect your family, you know protect your assets, protect yourself financially. Um, and and that's it. So uh, if you're if you're interested in more specific time points, like in how we do our date calculations, uh, we offer what's called a gold index, and there we uh, provide time points into the future for gold. Have a stock index, uh, so when we're looking to see the you know the turn points uh, and especially the crash here for the for the equity market, stock market, um, and that that's really it, Ken. So I just uh, I wish everybody well. I wish you and your family uh, you know a great rest of the year and uh, and, and God bless. Well, Polny, thank you so much for those words and uh, just a, a lot of a lot of truth in, in what you said right there. And I'm going to be looking. You know, we're we're going to be watching September and into the fall here uh, for some big moves here in precious metals and uh, to say the least it has, hasn't been short of spectacular uh, with what we've been seeing in the precious metal sector so far and if we do see some big moves with gold and silver here and in the stock market uh, that'll be even more leveraged upside in the miners so uh, well Bob Polney thanks for joining me thank you so much Ken I wish you all the best